Welcome to On The Line. I'm your host as always, Juan Real K, with my partner in crime, the Rhino, Ryan Knowles. Man, it's so yes, great sir. to be with you, Rhino, here at Gangplank Studios in Chandler, Arizona. Rhino, really digging our new digs, man. I, last year we had the Loud Bar, like you said, uh, before the show we were talking about just the differences between being in a studio compared to being in a, in a bar with a bunch of loud people. <laughs> yeah, and it's a lot easier to, you know, kind of get our uh, get, get our thoughts get out. Get our bearings out, you know. Yeah, exactly. Get it going, you know. And hear ourselves think, and, uh, you know, we definitely, you know, we love you guys. We, we want to give you the best show possible. You know, right here on our YouTube page. You know, we love you guys very, very much. We appreciate you uh, tuning in, and you know, we got a we got a great show this week. Wow. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I was so hyped for this one. We, I want this. We one. want this show. We're going to yeah. do a rapid fire yeah. version, focusing really on the Oregon Duck game. Also, we're going to recap a little bit of Colorado. And of course, got my black on in commemoration of the upcoming blackout. Randall has a striped shirt. It's black. Well, we'll give him credit for it. You that. don't want me throwing you <laughs> under the bus. They don't want to know why I'm wearing a striped shirt. Don't don't start with me. Hey, wait not a minute. Today. Well, no, nah, we won't go there. Don't that's, throw that's me. Not, nah, I'm not going to throw you under the bus. That would be a blooper, a blooper <laughs> show that we could do later on where we could start throwing each other under the bus. Oh, but, Randall, let's talk a little bit go. about last Thursday. Uh, great time. We were in Scottsdale. We were up at yep. Firehouse with Cal Caldwell. Oh, yeah. Great party. Jeff Alba yes, from Die Hard Devil was there. Yep. Uh, and, of course, Cal's Uncle John. It was just a great, great time. And we got to witness, Rhino, the tale of two halves. And you're going to get a little bit more in detail about that. But, you know, that game didn't start off very well. Mm -hmm. we, we were all pretty ticked off at halftime. Oh, yeah. You know, ASU 20 to 17, 14 points in the last minute. I kind of had to go outside and kind of walk it off a little bit. Because yeah. I was fuming. He gets I was fuming. He gets fuming. <laughs> I was fuming a little bit. And just way too many mental mistakes. I mean, really not playing as a team in the first half. It felt Defense, Dennis Erickson uh, almost. A little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, playing down the competition a little bit. We, we kind of, you know, touched on this being maybe a trap game for this team in the first half. It certainly felt that way. Oh, they were, they, they were, came they out ready were, to I mean, play. I'm talking about know, Colorado, did well, give us well, the best shot. I mean, you know, in the first in the first it's quarter, just, it was in, the first, in the first quarter, you know, it felt like they were, you know, they were they were the better they were the better the more ready team. You know, they they, they got a couple of stops on defense. They were able to move the ball down the field a little bit. Second quarter, I felt like, was much better for the offense. They were starting to put some drives together. They put right. some points up on the board. Defense was still lagging behind a little bit, still trying to go off. You know, players were kind of going off on their own, trying to make these highlight real plays on this national stage, and they weren't really focusing on the on on the scheme of the unit. And right. they got exposed a, a little bit in the in, in that second quarter, especially. After Jamal Miles turned that turned the ball over on oh, that, that kickoff, the kickoff there were ten, that was ten consecutive points right before the half. A lot of momentum going Colorado's way. Thank God for my boy Rashad Ross Rashad taking Ross. back a hundred yards and, and said the second half. in a yes. post game interview that that is exactly what he envisioned himself doing. He says, "I'm going to yes. catch the ball and I'm going to run 100 percent." And he says, "When he got to full jets." He knew he was oh, going. Oh, yeah, he was <laughs> going. I mean, they didn't even touch him. I mean, that guy, is, uh, he's a sprinter playing football, pretty much. He's that fast. And that's set it and, up you know, we the saw that, that, And we saw that, you know, a little bit last year. They hadn't really given him a shot on special teams this year. It's been mostly Jamal Miles, but he's struggled on special teams this year. So it's good to see him get a shot. And uh, Tony Graham has already said that he will be the kickoff returner for the awesome. foreseeable future. Awesome. And so, and let's talk about some other performances you know, right now. Oh, you, man. You, you, you were... We were gushing. Oh, after yeah, well, this game. a lot more. You know, second half was you know a lot more disciplined. You know, they, they they pitched the shutout, which was really good to see. I said at halftime to anybody who would listen, they need to put up like twenty one unanswered points. They put up thirty one, which was good that's to beautiful. see. And uh, you know, they you know more disciplined, better pressure on the quarterback, and that's what ended up happening. They did lose the turnover battle. I talked about the ten straight points. Um, you know, we got you know the, the five penalties for thirty three yards. They could have done without. You touched on it. Uh, on Facebook, and you said, you know, that Graham needs to open up the woodshed a little bit. Right, take him to the woodshed. I, I think time. he did, and I think that, and the team responded in a big way. They ran the ball extremely well. Uh, 26, 261 yards total for the team. That was good to see. We talked about them wanting to run the ball. Uh, I felt like they, they did a good job opening up the, 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 the screen game. That we, which we haven't right. really seen this the year. DJ Foster yeah. and Marion Grace yeah. was a really yeah. good job. Yeah, and they had great vision once they caught the ball. They had great blocking downfield. They executed on the, in the screen game extremely well. A new wrinkle to kind of add to the offense for, for other teams to see on film. And, you know, they just saw something on the film, I think, against Colorado. And then, you know, they were able to, to do that uh, extremely well. Marion Grace, of course, with the three receiving touchdowns. Uh, DJ Foster had a nice game. Uh, that catch on that long touchdown throw from Taylor Kelly was was incredible. That yeah. I mean, that's a true freshman out there making that play. And then talking about the defense, you know, very solid for the most part, only allowing 255 yards, holding them to five of 17 on third down. Will Sutton, I mean, that one more can you say about that guy? That guy, Sutton wow, death. that guy is, I mean, quickly becoming one of the best defensive linemen in the country. I mean, no, he, can, he can just take over games, and he did that in this game: five tackles, two sacks. 
a tackle for loss, just a, a, a pass breakup, another another very dominant game. And after this game, ASU is first in conference in total defense, scoring defense, pass defense, sacks, and tackles for loss. I mean, talk about a quantum leap for a unit from last year where it, at the second half of the season they just looked completely lost. Right. And now they're one of the best in the country. Absolutely. So that recaps the Colorado game. Definitely a big win for ASU, 51-20. The tale of two halves as we talk about it. When we come back, we are going to be talking about the Oregon Ducks, the blackout rhino. Yes, sir. We're going to talk about the significance of the game, what it means, and uh, we'd like to hear from you as well. Always comment below, as you know, on our Facebook page. Don't go away. We'll be right back. You are on the line with your host, as always, Juan Roque, my partner in crime, the Rhino Ryan Knowles. And Rhino, talking about this blackout, yeah. this is a big deal. Oh, uh, October huge, 18th, huge. A, a lot has been put into this ASU with the citizens, concerned citizens of the Pac-12 <laughs> advertising. Blackout the Duck. about the Duck, blackout blacking the out the Duck. Yep. We blacked out our Facebook page. I had the idea yesterday, watching Monday Night Football, as I watched Peyton Manning lead the Broncos to that great comeback victory against the Chargers. Had this idea about blacking out my profile picture, blacking out my, uh, my cover photo on my Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And it just took off like wildfire. People oh, yeah. said, people well, I'm not, I wanted to do it Wednesday. I thought about doing it tomorrow at 6 p.m., 24 hours before the game. And I, I couldn't control it. By the time an hour had passed, pretty much it spread like wildfire through all the different websites. And Randall, talk about our Google Plus yeah, page as well. Our Google Plus page is also going to be blacked out uh, here in a little bit. And, you know, definitely want to join our circle on, on that. We're, you know, we're taking over social media. Absolutely. We're, on we're every, the kings. Yeah, we are on every social media circle. And definitely join our Google Plus page. We're on Twitter as well, on the line 74. So definitely follow that. We put a, put a lot of updates about our videos there as well. So, but yeah, getting back to this, I mean, this is really, yeah, speaking of viral campaigns, though, I mean, you know, the ASU launched this thing with the, with the blackout, the duck, with the whole campaign. That's great. You know, I mean, I that, that's, yeah, that, that was really, and, and, really and funny. It, I mean, it, got, it, it shows got some, you how different and the approach is, too. And it got some airtime on the, in the Colorado game Absolutely. as well. And, and here, hey, Randall, think about a year ago, the blackouts. Yeah. Not that much was put into it. I mean, yeah, well, it was a good blackout in the students, but there were a lot. There was some good turnout. There was good, there was good, yeah, but there was good turnout for the Missouri good. game. But, yeah. And, but, and, and, and you obey. But what I'm saying about the leadership potential, I mean, that always starts from the top. And when I saw what was going on with the concerned citizens of Pac-12 blacking out the duck, what ASU has invested in this, it starts at the top. And Steve oh, yeah. Patterson, you deserve my salute because I know that came from his mind about doing these different things. He has to sign off on it. He's taking some chances around. He's putting us out there. And I love it. Oh, yeah. I love definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a fun, different take on, on what you're wanting to do, what everyone's thinking. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you want to go out there, you want to, you want to be competitive, you want to, you know, present a, you know, a, a hostile environment when, the, you know, when the opposing team comes in. Why not? The Ducks do it all the time. Absolutely. Have you seen, have you seen their really stadium in a home game? It's it's <laughs> incredible how many people yeah. they pack in there. Sixty thousand and, and it's, change. And yeah, it's it's so so loud. So that's the kind of environment that you want. You know, people to come. You want opposing teams to come into, and I feel like that's what he's he's got going right now with this. You know, with this campaign. Absolutely. And you know, I I, I fully expect that that stadium to be blacked out completely. Right. And uh, looking at the actual matchup, so you got the number two team in the country. We're going to talk about their offense and defense here in the next uh, couple yeah. of segments. But looking at what I would say the hype surrounding this game, ASU five and one. Not a lot of people thought they'd be five and one. No. Uh, chosen to come in last, sitting in first place. Mm. SC is very mortal right now. Um, U of A is, you know, they're the rats. What are they going to do? Utah, we've already have, beaten Colorado. Have, 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 have yet to win a Pac-12 game. Right. We have a realistic shot Thursday of not only shocking the world, but taking command of not only the South right now, but the whole flipping conference. And you know what? Yeah, I'm I'm, I, I, I'm I'm geek. I haven't been this excited <laughs> for a football game in a very long time. Yeah, likewise, yes. And I, I, this is a game that, I mean, I said it before, this is a game I want. I mean, this is a game I feel like ASU can take. I mean, they've you know, they, they got all, all the things working for them right now. You know, they got the momentum. They got the home field. Uh, they're playing extremely, they're they're playing extremely <laughs> well. They're, they're playing extremely well right now. They're, you know, they, they just got to go out there and take care of business on the field. Absolutely. Right now, and we're going to get a little bit more into that of what it's going to take for ASU to pluck the duck. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to be talking about the duck offense, talking about what ASU defense is going to be facing on this Thursday. Don't go away. You are on the line with Juan Roque and the Rhino Ryan Knowles, my partner in crime, my brother, 
one of the best analysts I feel in in, in the game because you flatter me, a lot sir. Of, you, you do a lot of study, right? No, you work really hard <laughs> to get the truth and the right numbers yes. up to people. And in ASU's game this week against Oregon, the blackout, October 18th, Citizens of the Pac-12. I mean, on and on and on and on. Five and one against six and zero. Oh, number two against well, the coaches poll number twenty four. 25? Yeah, 24? well, yeah, I mean, Oregon, like that. Oregon really bad. Oregon's in the in number two in the, 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 the polls that matter, the BCS right. standings. And they They're are. They're three in the BCS, actually. Are they? I thought they were two. Florida got number two. A lot of okay. okay. Brugaha. Yeah, that's, that's right. Too. That's right. So, I mean, but this is still an extremely talented uh, team, and it all begins and ends with their offense. I mean, right. That's what people talk about, and that's where their the you know, explosive, the, 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 the explosive this <laughs> comes from. And rightfully so. I mean, they're averaging over 500 yards of total offense. More than 50 points a game, and it all starts with their quarterback and the young, the young Marcus Mario Ta, as he likes to pronounce it. He, he likes to. He, that's what he, I, I thought it was like a Spanish name, Mario or something. He's from Hawaii originally. So it's Mario Ta. Okay. He's from Hawaii originally. You know, his first season as starter runs this complicated Chip Kelly offense extremely well. You know, he's thrown for uh, about 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns. His passing percentage is is, is very good. It's almost 68 percent. So he's. You know, he completes he, he he manages this offense extremely well, and he's a great athlete. Probably the I think one of the best athletes Oregon's ever I, had at the quarterback there, position. There so. was a play against UW where the UW defensive end. You were end watching their film was, today. Yeah, yeah. The UW defensive end went for his knees and he jumped up, literally like he hurled him and completed yeah, a pass. He can, yeah, he can get that out and run. Was yeah, one he, of the he gets most out, impressive he, plays he I've seen. Out, he runs a little bit. I mean, that's what the Oregon offense does. I mean, it's that spread them out. You know, a lot of misdirection. They use their speed extremely well. And, and he prolongs plays with the offense. Speed. Yeah, and he's run for 221 yards and a touchdown. Doesn't throw the ball. He doesn't throw a very good deep ball. But with this offense and their big play ability, especially from the, the running back position, you don't really need him to. And, you know, it really starts with their running backs. I mean, he did, you know, speaking, I'm sorry, sticking with Mariota, uh, you know, he, he's prone to mistakes a little bit. Through, he's thrown five interceptions on the year. He's only Actually, averaging. And their last three games. Yeah, right that's up. right. He's only averaging. About eight yards per pass. So that's not very many. He likes to dink and dunk a little bit and let his receivers make plays after the catch. Uh, but he did have his best game against Washington a couple weeks ago, throwing for four touchdowns. But it really starts and ends with Oregon's offense when it comes to their running backs. Yeah, and, and they've been they become a running team right now. Oh, they're, very they're much just, so. They're all over very, the floor. Very much so. And yeah, and it's, and Kenyon Barner, the senior, is the guy that really talks. You really talk about. He could have been a high draft pick had he chose to come out this year. I feel. You know, he's, he's got. He's so explosive. He's bigger yeah. than the Michael James too. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Maybe not as fast, but he's. Uh, yeah. He's, definitely can take the punishment he, he, of the yeah, NFL he can, he can get out and he can run. He's very. Uh, uh, you know, he can run in between the tackles. He can, you know, he can get outside. He's got 727 yards and nine touchdowns already this year. And then, of course, uh, you know, the verse, Mr. Versatile, DeAnthony Thomas, the Black Mamba. Mamba. Black Mamba, <laughs> that's right. Lines up everywhere. He's uh, he's run this year for uh, 377 yards and six touchdowns. But he's also the team's number one receiver. They line him up out uh, outside slot. as well. Yeah, to get him out of slot position. 20, 20 receptions, 205 yards, and three touchdowns. He's also the team's kick and punt returner. And he averages about 12 yards every time he touches the football. That's amazing. And then, of course, you got uh, the true freshman, Byron Marshall, Cameron's brother. You know, I mean, he's uh, he's a good change of pace back. He's a he's a bruiser. He can run in between the tackles extremely well. And when you have some DC, some very good receivers on the outside, Braylon Addison, Keenan, and Keenan Lowe, as well as a very good tight end in uh, Colt Lyarla. You know, this is a very stacked offense. I feel, and they, they rely on their speed, the misdirection. You know, they go no huddle, they spread out defenses, and they you know they really outwork teams. And you know, talking, you know, I know, and the offensive line plays well, a big role. It's, in that. it's it's a group that's not very experienced, but they've been playing very well. They they have two seniors, they have a sophomore, a true sophomore, and a redshirt freshman starting. Yeah. And and specifically the younger guys. Just as we wind this down, I think they are going to be the most vulnerable about their tackle spots. That's where they're really the youngest. You know, Tyler Johnstone, retro freshman, right here from Hamilton High School. Uh, 6'6", 292, so he's big enough to play the position, but he's very susceptible to the speed rush. Uh, several times Washington defenders blew right by him, but of course Mario, Mario Ta and his uh, ability to avoid the rush uh, was able to save his neck. Yeah. But this is a guy that needs to be attacked. Junior Neely may be able to have a field day with him. And Jake Fisher is a true sophomore from the Uper, Uper, Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Right. Uh, Traverse City, 6'6", 294. A true sophomore, played as a true freshman last year, backing up the guard. He's another guy that ASU could potentially expose with Carl Bradford because, again, he has good feet. He's probably going to be all back 12, but it ain't going to be this season. Yeah, you got to keep contained on the outside with that speed. 
Um, you know, I feel like a- ASU's linebackers need to have their bring definitely bring their. A- and it's game. definitely as we wind this down. Ronis Grassu is one of the better centers in the Pac-12. I uh, started as a redshirt freshman last year and definitely is their anchor. But uh, a lot of a lot of ways we can expose this offensive line. Yeah. So that's going to wrap it up for the Duck offense, folks. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the Duck defense. Quack quack quack. How's ASU offense going to be able to stop these guys? Don't go away. We'll be right back. You are now on the line with your host, Juan Roque, and my partner in crime, the Rhino Ryan Knowles, and talking about the duck defense. ASU's uh, nemesis the last few years because of turnovers, mistakes. You know, 2010, Stephen Three with the big turnovers in the second half, the fumble recovery for a touchdown. Last season, Broncos gave, gave up, gave up nearly quarter. 600 yards of, the, of offense in that yeah. game. So, yeah, I mean, right. they, have, they have their shown themselves to be a little bit susceptible right. to giving up the big play and a lot of points up on the board, which is what ASU is going to need to win this and, game. And, and this season, the Duck defense has been hailed because they're much improved, um, and it all starts with their D-line. Yeah. Their D-line is what makes things happen. You know, they line up in a 3-4 um, type look. They line up with three down linemen. They line up with four down linemen. Um, they lined up a stand-up all the way across the line, and they do so many different things right now. And what it's designed to do, and I studied them very closely the last couple of days, it's designed to confuse the offensive line, specifically the center. Center sets the protection. These guys move around. They line up in different places. They'll line up inside. They'll line up outside. You know, Deion Jordan will line up as a linebacker. He'll line up as a true defensive end. He'll get down in a three. He'll get up in one, in a, in a two-point. So it's all designed to confuse the protection and find openings for their blitzers, and they got very good pass rushers. It starts with their defensive ends. That's the strength. Taylor Hart uh, is their leading sack man. He uh, four sacks on the year, 18 tackles, four tackles for a loss, a defended pass right now, and a fumble recovery. This is a guy who needs to be watched. He's six foot six, 290 pounds. He's big. Uh, he's a guy that needs to be controlled. He can get up in the air and bat passes down. And of course, Deion Jordan is yeah, he's son. six seven. Six yeah, seven. He can, yeah. he can do that as well. Deion and Jordan six seven, two forty three. Absolutely, yeah. right here from Chandler High School, right, right. down the street. Uh, and uh, is their guy. He's their guy. Doesn't have as many sacks as, as Hart does because a lot of times he's double teamed. They do spy him. They drop him in coverage. He does all kinds of different things in that position. He's, he's like a hybrid. He's like an inside, outside linebacker, defensive end. These are the two guys that make that defense go right. and open up the game for the second level. Isaac Remington, Wade Kelapiki, those are guys that are more the stout guys. They're there to just take up room, absorb two or three blockers. Well, that's and what you need Their linebackers is really where this. That's what you need in a 3-4. Right. And, and the linebackers yeah, is where it's and, at. And, and, and it all starts and ends in with their middle, their senior middle linebacker. A lot of seniors on this team, a lot of upperclassmen. And Kiko Alonso, their middle linebacker, is the real stud here. Uh, 36 tackles, 7 tackles for loss, a sack, and 2 interceptions. Really fills up that stat sheet. Absolutely. He was the Rose Bowl defensive MVP last year. And he's finally playing up to his potential after, you know, the three really subpar years. He had some brushes with well, the what ball. Have, what have you seen but, Rhino in this season? He's got That's excellent different. range. I mean, for mm-hmm. a middle linebacker, especially in a 3-4, you need to be able to run sideline to sideline and cover the pass and play, and play the run equally well. And he's got great instincts for that. And he, he's just a complete player, in my opinion, at that middle linebacker And you said he's overcome some legal issues, too. Yeah, that's huh? right, yeah. So, I mean, for him to come back from that and, you know, really stick with this program, I think, is a, a testament to his character as well. And then you talk about what, on the weak side, Michael Clay, you know, 33 tackles, 3.5 for loss, 2 sacks. He's built a little bit like a safety. He's only like 5'11 on that weak side linebacker spot. But he's an excellent attacker. He also moves extremely well sideline to sideline. They like to move him into the middle next to Alonzo. And they both yeah, they and some together and together they play the run extremely well up the middle. And then uh, you know, we talk, you can't talk about the, the, the Ducks defense before this season without talking about their safety, Brian Boyette. Unfortunately, he was uh, he's out for the year. But a guy who's really stepped in and played very well for him is Avery Patterson, a guy who's kind of underachieved in his career, but really stepped into his own this year at that free safety spot. He's got 28 tackles and a couple interceptions as well. Uh, the strong safety, Brian Jackson, is, a, is a, an outstanding player. He's got five pass breakups on the year, as well as two fumble recoveries. So he really gets after yeah, they, they, they strip the ball. He's a, they, 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 yeah. a lot of people comp- have called him the predator yeah. because he, he really gets after. He's a ball hawk. Yeah, they're strippers so, and they're not the right. They're not the ones on the pole. They're the ones on the football. <laughs> and then uh, you know, definitely got to talk about their uh, their very talented corner, Evo Ekbre Olamu. Uh, Twenty five tackles, couple interceptions. 10 pass breakups on the year. I mean, he's got great closing speed, and he's also got four forced fumbles on the year. I mean, he gets after it. He's always around the ball. Uh, definitely a very talented uh, uh, player there at that corner spot. And they're only giving up 
360 yards total per game and only 20 points. Uh, much improved from last year. Which, I mean, and when, you, when, your offense is, when your offense is as talented as they are, you, know, you don't really need to be playing a whole lot, a, a ton of defense. But I think they will in this game because they have not seen a team as dynamic as ASU, especially on offense. This is going to be a game that's really going to test that Oregon defense about whether or not you know they can they can contain Taylor Kelly in the pocket because I, I, no team has been has been able to as of yet. And Taylor Kelly, of course, without an interception since the Missouri game when there were two picks, one in the second quarter and one in the, no, those, the, were, the those were his only two picks right. all year. Exactly. So, so yeah. definitely ASU ball security is going to be huge. Yeah, and sticking with Oregon, I'm sorry, just one more thing to mention about Oregon's defense. Of course, they did pitch a shutout. Against Arizona, allowing zero touchdowns in five trips. Good for them. Trips. <laughs> Good for them. But don't do it to us because we're going to do it to you. That's right. <laughs> All right. That's going to wind it down for the intro to the Oregon defense. And as uh, we start to wind down this rapid fire edition of On the Line, we're going to be talking about the keys to the game. Don't go. Right, don't go. We'll be right back. Welcome back to On the Line. I'm the Rhino, Ryan Knowles, and these are my keys to the game for the ASU Sun Devils against the Oregon Ducks this Thursday. First of all, stay home. The Devils cannot over-pursue or get away from assignments. That's when the Ducks use their speed to burn opposing teams for big plays. You know, Stay disciplined in your reads, technique, and beat this offense as a unit. They can't go off on their own like they did against Colorado because that's when mistakes happen, and that's when points get on, get on the board, and that's the only way to do it. That's the only way to do it. Points get put on the board against them, so they definitely have to stay home, know their assignments, and just do their jobs. That's what Todd Graham has preached. That's what they've got to do. Number two, don't pull a Plaxico. Shooting yourself in the foot with penalties and turnovers is the easiest way to get in a hole against a talented, explosive team like Oregon. Don't give them the opportunity to capitalize on mistakes by not making any. Ball security, discipline, those are the words of the day, brought to you by the letter W. That'll do it for my keys to the game. Uh, check me out on our Facebook page and comment below on our on our YouTube video page here. For all right, I'm gonna edit that. Out. Welcome back down the line. I'm your host Juan Roque. And my keys to the game for ASU's blackout game against the Oregon Ducks is. Very simple. Protect the football. No turnovers. Oregon is an opportunistic team. They are good at stripping the football. They are also very good at squatting on coverage. They sit on routes and they read the quarterback's eyes and then they'll jump the football and get cheap interceptions. They did that against Washington a couple of times. They cannot allow themselves to get into a lull and allow Oregon to anticipate where the ball is going. That's that's big time in this game. they got to be able to be precise, be decisive. Taylor Kelly has done an excellent job of not turning the ball over. He cannot get into a bad habit on Thursday of allowing these duck DBs and linebackers to read where his eyes are going and key in on a receiver too long. Also, another big thing in this is going to be on the run game. They cannot put the ball on the ground in any fashion. This is going to be a big game. Turnovers are key. Oregon, again, opportunistic team, cannot turn the ball over. That's going to be the biggest one for the offense. On defense, pressure, pressure, pressure. they got to stuff their run game. you got to make Mariota beat you with his arm. He is not very uh, adept at getting the deep balls. He gets very cheap uh, throws because the defensive breaks down and covers. And that's another thing that they got to do. Pressure, pressure, pressure the quarterback, and they got to be able to get ready, get set. Do not let the Ducks get cheap yardage or cheap plays by lulling around and waiting for them. These guys sprint to the football, and they snap the ball quickly. So Randolph is going to have to get his team ready for a, for a fast-paced game. they got to be able to get to the quarterback, knock him over, and they got to stuff that running game. Kenyon Barber cannot be allowed to run free. This team is averaging over 300 yards on the ground. It has to be stopped. There is no alternative. you got to make them beat you in the air. One big stat for this game that's very interesting is Oregon has allowed 41 tackles behind the line of scrimmage this season for for a loss of, of over of over 100 of over of over 300 300 400 yards now ASU on turn is averaging 6.8 tackles per loss per game this is a huge step for ASU they got to get these guys behind the line of scrimmage they got to tackle them they got to make big plays and they got to get them in third and long and they got to make them punt I'm Juan Roque. Those are my keys to the game. Of course, join our conversation anytime on our Facebook page. Comment below. What are your keys to the game? We'll always respond. You may not like what we have to say, but we're definitely going to say it. You are on the line with Juan Roque and my partner, Craig, the Randall Ryan Nose. I do got to make a correction on my uh, keys to the game, Rhino. It was 41 tackles behind the line of scrimmage for 166 yards and losses, not over 300. 
Uh, I, I don't well, think the Ducks are that way, bad. Either way, <laughs> ASU is one of the lead, is one of the nation's leaders in tackles for loss, Absolutely. and they get, got to keep that up because if they can for, if they can force the Ducks into a lot of passing downs, I like their chances in this game. Yeah, we just had to make so that correction because, yeah. as you know, the internet trolls will always call you out on that. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, say this, is, about this is probably the, the toughest team. I mean, we said it at the beginning. This is probably the toughest team ASU will play oh, all question. year. I mean, the Ducks have eleven straight road wins. I mean that's the best in the nation right now, and you know they just they, they just eat you up with with their style yeah, and, play. and they use your mistakes and against Chip. That's what yeah, they do. I mean, Chip that's Kelly, how they, that's Chip, how they Chip, make their Chip living. Chip Kelly is an offensive mastermind, he, and he I mean you know considering all the players that they've lost in years past, you know Michael James, Legarrette Blunt, just going down the, the line. Quarterback was only exactly, remember to suspension Mazzoli, opened the door for and, for Darren Thomas. Darren, to start. Darren Tom, and then Darren Thomas leaving early. Well, Michael, you know I mean you mentioned uh, Legarrette Blunt. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. So I mean, you know, it's always the, the adage has always been: great teams don't recruit; they reload, and that's what Oregon does. Next man and, up, yeah, so exactly. And you know, I mean, but this is just Mar Mariota. I think you can get to him. I mean, he's going to be the X factor for the Ducks in this game, and he's only making his second conference road start, and it, right. just his first, his first true road start. So. I mean, I'm looking I, forward to seeing what, the, what, they do when they, what they do yeah. when they, you know, what, what ASU's defense does when they pin their ears back and really come after him hard. Yeah, because I feel like they can get to him with some Tyler answers. Johnstone, I think. I think Jake Fisher. I think that's the key for us to get to Mariota is Junior O'Neilly, Carl Bradford, Devon Coleman, whoever's going to be rushing that passer. They need to get under these guys. They're tall. Yeah, they're they're lanky. They don't bend their knees all that well because they're young. They haven't learned to use their bodies yet. So. These guys are not world beaters. They're not Orlando Pace type tackles. They're not Tony Baselli type tackles. They're not Juan Roque type tackles. Okay, that. that is <laughs> Either way, these guys can be gotten to, and they need to get to the quarterback, and they need to be able to take good angles and get this guy on his oh, back. Oh man! <laughs> but uh, another guy who I think might be a, a key for ASU in this game, and uh, the one thing I saw in the Colorado tape was that they were bringing Alden Darby on on a safety yes. blitz off the edge quite a bit. Beautiful. So, yeah, got a sack they, they, yeah, they can continue to do that with some with some success because like you said, they've had a hard time, you know, picking up the blitz. I mean, they've had a lot of negative plays for the Ducks this year. So, if they can get, you know, him off the edge and get him after Mariota, I, I, I you know, I definitely like that like that matchup. I like and, what and, they can do there. And defensively, if we can stop the play action right now, Yes. If we could, because that, they live and die by that as well. Right. If we can stop that, I think we have an excellent opportunity, and we got to make them turn the ball over. We can't turn it over, and we got to get some turnovers from them. Because yeah. they don't turn the ball over much. They, they lost seven fumbles yeah. in six games. I mean, that's not great. I mean, that's a little more than one a game. But they've also thrown five picks in the last three games. Well, yeah, and no, so, no, I mean, they're not immortal. Yeah, no, and no missed tackles. I mean, if they can just be yeah, seven, no highlight reel, just just tackle. Exactly. Yeah. Tackle. So I mean, if they can do that, I mean, uh, you know, this is a big game for them. I mean, I think they realize the, the, you know, just what's at stake here, like what you know what's going on. But just I think don't this team get, gets it. I mean, I if think they, they, if they don't. Yeah, if they don't, as long as they don't come in overhyped. And you know, really, really stay down on the ground. Just, just you know, just realize that this is you know, this is a great team. You know, but we can we can hang with them. Just have, go in with that mindset. I don't want moral victories. I, I just want a victory. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I don't want moral victories. I just want the victory yeah. right now. And we definitely, this team is not unbeatable. No team is unbeatable. Nope. Every team can be beaten. It just depends on how you approach it. So. This Thursday is going to be electric. We will be there. We will be in all black. We invite you to come out, fans. There's less than 6,000 tickets left. Get your butts out to the stadium. StubHub, ASU's ticket office. You can go several places, Craigslist online, and find cheap tickets. Get to the stadium. Let's black this thing out, and let's knock the hell out of the Ducks on Thursday. Yes, sir. That's going to do it for this rapid-fire edition of On the Line. Of course, I'm Juan Roque with the Ryan O'Ryan Knowles. It's always great, brother. Likewise. I love this guy, man. I love this guy. <laughs> of course, I want to thank the Viral Marketplace for bringing the show to you. Craig Darling, our producer. Jeff Singer, our editor and producer. And, of course, we want to thank the Game Plank for giving us the great digs this season. And, of course, you're always welcome to join the conversation. Right, Rhino? Yes, sir. Tell us what you think. Yep. Tell us what you want on this show. We want to hear from you. That's going to do it. Go Devils. Beat Oregon. <laughs>